Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today something unusual awaits us, with epic plans, beautiful shots, and of course a lot of bright white and red colors. Yes, another brainchild of the main virgin of Great Britain has reached the borders of outer space, so it's time to figure out what it is exactly. Introducing Virgin Orbit and its children, Cosmic Girl and Launcher One. Naturally, the story of Virgin Orbit will be incomplete from the very beginning if we don't mention the fact that this is not the first and not the only space subsidiary of the Virgin group. The first, and for a long time the better known one, is Virgin Galactic. Briefly about it. The history of its adventures began in 2004. The Cassini-Huygens probe entered the orbit of Saturn. Google launched its mail service, some guy from South Africa tried to make a launch rocket, the first saw came out, and the author of the Aviation Channel was copying his classmates' homework. At that time, the Spaceship One aircraft, created by Mojave Airspace in conjunction with Scale Composites, which jumped to an altitude of just 110 kilometers and became the first private manned vehicle to reach outer space, became a celebrity. Now it even sounds kind of funny. The concept of this vehicle was that it was launched in the air from an airplane. Not to say that this was a new idea, but now it found a second wind. Then Richard Branson joined the party. He, along with the father of scale composites, Bert Rutan, founded the Spaceship Company, the goal of which was to create new systems for delivering payloads to orbit, be it cargo or tourists. In parallel with it, Virgin Galactic was created, which acted as the operator of these systems. There were a lot of plans. The company was supposed to create two vehicles at once, a carrier aircraft and a spacecraft, continuing the ideology of Spaceship One. They were named respectively, the carrier White Knight Two and the spacecraft Spaceship Two. However, these plans were not implemented as quickly as it was initially assumed. The work dragged on, the concepts were being corrected, as well as the design of ships and carriers. Plus, there were several accidents that hit pretty hard both in terms of time and of the company's reputation. But the work continued, though slowly the vehicles were created and began to fly. And in New Mexico they even built the Spaceport America. Pompous, patriotic, stylish, fashionable, youthful. While the Spaceship 2 test teams were cosplaying astronauts of the early 1960s, Virgin Galactic was working on the concept of launching not only manned spacecraft with tourists, but also light launch rockets. Well, the idea is old and interesting. At least Orbital Science for a long time had been launching payloads with light rockets from Stargazer carriers, and Virgin had potential unification among its trump cards. Both the manned ship and the launch vehicle had to be launched from the same White Knight 2 flying platform, which could help save money, only a rocket had to be created, and the more active operation of White Knight 2 would reduce operational costs. Resources were found. The idea was supported by investors, both small and huge, American and for example Arabian. The Emirates even then wanted to be closer to the stars. Motivation was added by the development of technologies, thanks to which the potential market for small satellites and all kinds of CubeSats increased, so small rockets could become a pretty good launch tool. Not only Virgin had noticed this trend. For example, SpaceX made their Falcon 1 for similar purposes, and the neighbors from Mojave moved practically in parallel, creating their monstrous strata launch. The concept was evolving, and finally, in 2017, the unmanned launch program was spun off into a separate business. Virgin Orbit appeared, apart from Virgin Galactic. The company had set up its own site in Long Beach, hired a couple of hundred employees, and was put under the leadership of Dan Hart, the former chief of satellite systems at Boeing. And now, back to the idea. Since White Knight 2, not a very large aircraft, was supposed to be the carrier, the mass dimensional specifications of the rocket itself were somewhat limited. But its creators did not see this as a problem and calmly continued the development. The launch vehicle, which was named Launcher 1, belonged to the light class. It was supposed to be quite a classic liquid propellant rocket with one engine in the first stage and one in the second, plus a payload under a small fairing. It was announced back in 2012, and then it was assumed that it would be able to launch payloads weighing about 200 kilograms, 440 pounds, into low Earth orbit. 
Meanwhile, the emphasis was on the possibility of working with sun-synchronous orbits. They saw there a promising market for themselves. The work was going actively and even the first customers appeared. And then unexpected adventures with engines began. Initially, Virgin Galactic created their own Newton 2 engine with about 211 kilonewtons, 47,000 pounds of thrust for the first stage and the Newton 1, 16 kilonewtons, 3,600 pounds of thrust for the second stage, which was technically a vacuum version of the first. There is nothing unique here either. Ordinary gas generator cycle rocket engines powered by the kerosene liquid oxygen pair. The engines were built and tested quite successfully, one might even say too successfully. The data obtained showed that they can be easily boosted without loss of reliability and the mass of payloads can be almost doubled. It was very difficult to ignore such an opportunity and the coverage of the market with such numbers would obviously be wider. But these desires ran into an obvious problem. The rocket, which they now wanted to create, could no longer be pulled by the White Knight 2 carrier. It turned out to be too large and heavy. It was clear that the unification of carriers had to be abandoned. If the guys from Virgin want to launch the desired payloads with the desired rockets, they will have to abandon the White Knight 2 and either make its larger version or use something already existing as a carrier. They took the second, faster and cheaper way. The place of the small but exotic plane was taken by the usual but hefty Boeing 747. The new plane was big enough to accommodate a large rocket under its wing, and the Jumbo's lifting performance in fact removed the issue of its mass. The airliner itself was assembled in 2001 and flew with Virgin Atlantic until 2015, so after the aircraft was withdrawn from the fleet, it actually passed from the possession of one Virgin Group subsidiary to another Virgin Group subsidiary. The plane was repainted, ferried to California and given its own name, Cosmic Girl. According to the general layout of the Cosmic Girl, it is a quite traditional Boeing 747-400. There were no wild modifications with the new airframe, like in the Strata launch. They made only minor changes to the systems, installed launch control equipment, fortunately there is more than enough space in the plane, and of course prepared a place for the rocket itself on the suspension under the left wing console between the second engine and the fuselage. In fact, the modification here was not particularly large scale. On the basic 747s, this part of the wing has already been reinforced so that an additional engine can be suspended there for transportation. Sometimes a slightly unusual phenomenon can be seen. This place of course did not imply the suspension of carrier rockets, but you could say that it was not reworked on a very large scale. The structure was reinforced and a huge bright red pylon was installed under the wing. Let's see what they hang under that pylon. Launcher 1 is a two-stage liquid propellant launch vehicle with a length of 21.3 meters 70 feet, and a launch weight of about 30 tons. This rocket is the result of the desire to expand the possibilities of launches, so it can be considered a kind of second generation without creating the first. The first stage has a diameter of 1.6 meters, 5 feet and 3 inches, and is powered by the Newton 3 engine, which has reached 326 kilonewtons, 73.5 pounds of thrust. There is only one engine in the tail, and most of the stage, as expected, is occupied by tanks, oxygen and kerosene. To perform a maneuver in the atmosphere at the initial stage of flight, the rocket is equipped with aerodynamic surfaces. After starting from the Cosmic Girl carrier, the stage should operate for approximately 180 seconds, after which it is decoupled. It is disposable, no rescue systems are provided, too much for such a little thing. The second stage is slightly smaller, its diameter is 1.3 meters, 4 feet and 3 inches, and it rises into space on the Newton 4 vacuum engine with a thrust of about 26.5 kilonewtons, 6,000 pounds, also liquid. The engine is equipped for 360 seconds of operation and can be restarted repeatedly. All this allows payloads weighing up to 500 kilograms or 1100 pounds to be put into low earth orbits. Not bad. By the way, at the end of 2019, Virgin Orbit announced plans to create as much as a three-stage version of the rocket, capable of working with deep space, throwing 100 kilogram vehicles to the moon and 50 to Mars. Without Mars nowadays, no one needs space at all, but with it, let it be. 
If you think Elon Musk likes loud statements, you're probably not familiar with Richard Branson. The rocket assembly and payload integration is performed at Virgin Orbit site in Long Beach, California. The flight pattern assumes that an aircraft with a suspended rocket will fly into a given region, climb to an altitude of about 11 kilometers (35,000 feet), and in a short jump with a decent angle of attack, drop the rocket so it can then launch in free flight. Work on the plane and on the rocket was carried out not at a very active pace, although there were no serious breaks. Plans to carry out test launches in 2017 slowly but surely slid to the right. Finally, by the end of 2018, Cosmic Girl and Launcher 1 took to the air together for the first time. The first test launch was carried out in May 2020 and was unsuccessful. The rocket dropped from the pylon, launched the main engine, but due to a failure in the fuel system, turned it off almost immediately, and its inglorious fall ended in self-destruction. Virgin Orbit has done extensive work to understand what happened and how to fix it. Meanwhile, it was recognized that all the operations that the aircraft had to perform were completely successful. The second test launch was performed in January 2021, and this time was successful. The plane did its job according to plan, and after the rocket was dropped from the pylon, its engine successfully started. The second stage also performed very well, and 10 miniature NASA CubeSats successfully entered the specified orbit. We can congratulate the aviators and rocket scientists, years of torment have yielded their results. Besides, formally, Launcher 1 was the first liquid propellant carrier successfully launched into space from an air platform, a small but nice fact. Several more tests and commercial launches are planned for 2021, including launches in the interests of the US military. They couldn't help but take a bite on that pie. Virgin Orbit even created a subsidiary company, Vox Space, for this. And now for the obvious question. What exactly is Virgin Orbit offering that all the astronautics fans should flock to them for launches? The first point is about the bonuses. A big plus of an air launch with a Boeing 747 is its flexibility. Thanks to the flying launch pad, launches can be performed from optimal zones, which simplifies the deployment of payloads. Cape Canaveral cannot be moved 300 kilometers to the east. Plus, it reduces the dependence on weather conditions, because of which the launches of conventional rockets often have to be postponed. In addition, the dependence on ground infrastructure is much lower. Launch pads, maintenance towers and other things are not required. The rocket, of course, is not an atlas either, but everything has a cost. At the moment, the home of Cosmic Girl is Long Beach Airport and the Mojave Spaceport. But given the flexibility of the air launch, it is planned to use it in other facilities, both in the continental United States and beyond. For example, in Japan, Puerto Rico and Guam. Cosmic Girl is still a Boeing 747, which means that it can fly from any airport where its ordinary relatives can work. And the Launcher 1 rocket is not that big. With dimensions of 21.3 meters by 1.6 meters, it can easily fit in heavy freighters, such as the Il-76 and C-17. So in theory, when setting up work, Cosmic Girl is able to fly from either Mojave or Heathrow. According to Virgin Orbit, once all the operations are arranged, they will be able to carry out two launches a month. In principle, there's nothing particularly fantastic about it. The rockets by themselves do not make an impression of incredibly complex structures, and the main task is to establish their production at a decent level of quality. The Cosmic Girl is almost an ordinary Boeing 747. These guys were originally designed to fly, putting it mildly, more than twice a month. And given the popularity of the model, there should be no problems with maintenance. And the second question is even more obvious. How exactly are Cosmic Girl and Launcher 1 different from Stargazer and Pegasus, which have been flying since 1990? Our hearts demand innovation, but here it is just copying and repainting. Actually, it's a combination of accomplishments of one company and losses of the other. When back in those glorious times, Orbital Sciences was creating its platform, it applied all the available technologies. The excellent Lockheed TriStar, a solid propellant rocket with a decent performance, and as a result, launching a 500kg load for $16 million. Not cheap, but acceptable. 
The problem was that at that time, the market for light and compact payloads was still very small. Most of them required larger transport, and the demand for air launch services was very modest. Since the beginning of the 21st century, this demand has grown. But the program lived in a stalled mode for a very long time. The equipment became morally and physically obsolete, and the cost grew. Only 44 launches were performed in 2019, and the cost increased to the range of 40 to almost 60 million dollars, which in our time is terribly expensive. You could say that Virgin Orbit is applying the same concept, but on the other hand, they have become its second wind. The operation of the popular Boeing 747 is probably much cheaper than the already unique L-1011. The liquid propellant Launcher 1 is also new and applies more recent solutions. And Virgin Orbit itself, with a couple of its own facilities and 300 employees, can be considered a more flexible and economical office than the giant Northrop Grumman with a complex organizational structure and staff, the number of which would be enough for an entire city. Virgin now says that the cost of their launches will be around 12 million dollars, several times cheaper. Well, if everything comes together and works. And of course, if they can win their share of the seething red ocean of commercial launch services for small payloads, where, at least in the private sector, the guys from Rocket Lab are already having fun. But, using the example of giant corporations monopolists, we see what happens when there is no competition. So let there be a battle of rocket scientists. Now Jeff Bezos will roll out his creation, and then we can have a real party. So you, lovers of everything that flies, like and subscribe to the channel, so as not to miss the news from this, in the literal sense, space rave. Fast flights, soft landings, and may only the civilian rockets fly above your heads.